I want to first say welcome. My name is Felicia Hyland, and I am the coordinator for family and community engagement here. I oversee the Family Academy program, and I'm so excited that you all will join us tonight. Tonight, we're going to be talking about social emotional learning. This is um, a topic that is near and dear to us, and we're so excited to share with families the wonderful things that social emotional learning um, and better known as SEL does to support your child here in WJCC schools. So we're happy that you joined us to hear more about it. Presenting for us today are Jessica Water, who is our Director of School Counseling and Career and Technical Education, and Mr. Um, Nicholas Keir, who is our Student Services Specialist. So they will be facilitating today's session, and um, we look forward to you being able to ask questions at the end. You can pop questions in the chat at any time, and we will do our best to facilitate um, a Q&A se session at the end of this um, session. So welcome again, and we look forward to sharing more information with you. Turn it over to you, Jessica. Thank you. Okay, first lesson, <laughs> getting it to, pro to project to the next slide. So good evening. Um, before we begin, I'd like to take a minute to introduce you to our team here tonight. As Dr. Hyland said, my name is Jessica Walter and I'm the Director of School Counseling and College and Career Readiness here in WJCC. And my teammate tonight is Nick Keir, who's a student service specialist here in WJCC as well and works with schools on implementing our multi-tiered systems of supports or MTSS programs. We're excited to tell you more about SEL and WJCC, and thank you for joining us tonight. As we begin our discussion on social emotional learning, it's important to start with what social emotional learning or SEL is. SEL is an important part of education and development for all individuals. Virginia established a vision for social emotional learning that aligns with the VDOE's mission and vision to provide equitable learning opportunities for all students. In WJCC, we use the same definition as the Virginia Department of Education, which is adapted from the Collaborative for Academic Social and, Emotion social and Emotional Learning, or CASEL. SEL is the process through which all young people and adults acquire and apply the knowledge skills and attitudes, develop healthy identities, manage emotions, and achieve personal and collective goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain supportive relationships, and make responsible and caring decisions. As we move throughout our presentation tonight, we will dive deeper into what this looks like and the details of SEL. In WJCC, SEL is a priority within our strategic plan, Elevate Beyond Excellence, and can be linked to goals one, two, and four. While we share what SEL is, it is also important to note what SEL is not. There are common misconceptions that SEL is the same as therapy and that SEL only teaches individuals about feelings. While emotional awareness and understanding is a component of SEL, it is much bigger than emotions alone. SEL helps youth develop a range of life skills from being aware and managing their feelings to making good decisions to setting to making good decisions to setting and achieving goals. SEL also does not tell students what feelings and thoughts to have, but instead helps them recognize and understanding the feelings and thoughts that they have. In a few moments, we will discuss the five core competencies of SEL that will help in developing a stronger understanding of what SEL is. So in short, social emotional learning is life skills that help individuals establish and maintain supportive relationships and make responsible and caring decisions. In July of 2021, the Virginia Department of Education released SEL guidance standards for grades K through 12. With the creation of these standards, the Virginia Department of Education has also created resources for school divisions to use. These resources are intended to provide all Virginia school divisions with standards and guidelines to instruct students on the following overarching 
concepts with the corresponding C from the profile of a Virginia graduate identified. We will share these overarching concepts with you later in the presentation as well. These SEL standards were developed by a team of individuals from across the state that included representation from school administrators, teachers, school counselors, school psychologists, school social workers, college professors, community leaders who work with youth and parents. The SEL standards were developed for kindergarten and across two year grade bands for grades one through 12. For example, kindergarten, first and second, third and fourth, fifth and sixth, seventh and eighth, ninth and 10th, and 11th and 12th. These grade bands also allow for developmental differences in students. For those that would like to review the VDOE SEL standards, they are available online on the Virginia Department of Education's website, and we will provide that link for you tonight. In alignment with CASEL, the five core SEL competencies are self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and decision-making. We define those as self-awareness being the ability to understand one's own emotions, thoughts, and values, and how they influence behavior across contexts. Self-management as the ability to manage one's emotions, thoughts, and behaviors effectively in different situations and to achieve goals and aspirations. Social awareness is the ability to understand the perspectives of and empathize with others, including those from diverse backgrounds, cultures, and contexts. Relationship skills is the ability to establish and maintain healthy and supportive relationships and to effectively <clears throat> navigate settings with diverse individuals and groups. And decision-making is defined as the ability to make caring and constructive choices about personal behavior and social interactions across diverse situations. What we are sharing here is the CASEL framework, or WHEEL as it is also called. This framework highlights the importance of establishing learning environments and coordinating practices across key settings of classrooms, schools, families and caregivers, and communities to enhance all students' social, emotional, and academic learning. It truly is a partnership. Now let's just take a quick moment to review the five SEL competencies in a little more depth, starting with self-management. As you can see on the screen shortly, VDOE has identified two specific skills for each of the competencies. These skills have also already been linked to one of the five Cs, as you can see in bold. For each of the grade bands, these skills are presented with developmentally appropriate language and skill sets. For example, in the grades one and two band for self-management, one of the objectives reads, I can describe something I have accomplished and identify something I would like to accomplish in the future. For the grade seven and eight band, the objective is, I can evaluate my goals in relation to my previous accomplishments. And for the grade 11 and 12 band, the objective is I can independently develop goals based on evaluating my previous performances and predicting future performances. Here are the remaining SEL competency skills and their 5C connections. Take a moment to begin reading through the remaining text that we have on the slide. We will also add a link in the chat to a PDF of this slide. These standards are designed to be accessible for students across grade levels and to match up with common academic activities and strategies used across Virginia and WJCC.
When talking, <clears throat> excuse me, when talking about SEL, it is important to also discuss the benefits. There is a wealth of research related to SEL and the impacts for students. Overwhelmingly, the results of the research point to the positive outcomes for students related to SEL. Per Castle, when students have supportive relationships and opportunities to develop and practice social, emotional, and cognitive skills across many different contexts, academic learning accelerates. Hundreds of studies offer consistent evidence that SEL bolsters academic performance. Results from a landmark meta-analysis that looked across 213 studies involving more than 270,000 students found that SEL interventions that address the five core competencies increased students' academic performance by 11 percentile points compared to students who did not participate. Students participating in SEL programs showed improved classroom behavior and increased ability to manage stress and depression and better attitudes about themselves, others, and school. Additional meta-analyses echoed these findings. Consistency across independent research teams offers strong support that well-implemented SEL programs are beneficial. On the slide, we have highlighted short-term, intermediate, and long-term benefits for students based on research. In breaking down the research, we can look at the impacts of SEL for students related to behavior outcomes, attitude, and academic performance. To highlight some of what is shared here, you can see that students who had access to SEL had higher academic motivation, better understanding of consequences, improved attendance in school, increased class participation, improvements in reading comprehension, and higher grades in school. The positive impacts of SEL for students are high and can not only lead to increased school performance, but also to preparation for future goals. In WJCC, to both help build an understanding of SEL and enhance what our teachers and schools are already doing, we have paired each core competency with one of the Virginia five C's. As you saw earlier, these pairings were identified in the overarching concepts, but we have narrowed the focus in WJCC to one competency and one of the five C's. By creating a K-12 focus in the division, we are able to support consistent conversations at all levels and support conversations outside of school with families as well. It's important to note here that we know that these skills don't happen in isolation and that all skills will happen fluidly throughout the school year. However, our goal during each time frame is to have a focus on the two identified skills and be intentional about our conversation and practice related to these skills within our schools. As mentioned previously, these are practices that are already happening during instruction. We are just providing a framework to focus and enhance these practices. Here you will see our outline in WJCC and the pairings we have identified for the five time frames throughout the school year. We will dive deeper into what this could look like in each school in a few moments, but for a brief overview, these skills can be highlighted through school counseling classroom lessons, inclusion of SEL in current academic lessons, or activities with teachers in classrooms, or school-wide events such as Unity Week that occurred last week. As Jessica has stated, there are significant benefits to social emotional learning in our schools. SEL encompasses a common language throughout the school building and practices and communication. It is something that is taught modeled and reinforced. The teaching is typically done in the classroom, but the extended learning takes place in the modeling and reinforcement by others in the school community. When SEL is effective, schools and classrooms are positive, welcoming, inclusive, safe, and collaborative. 
When students feel welcome and safe in their schools and classrooms, they can focus their effort and thinking skills on academic success. Now let's take a quick look at some of the ways that SEL instruction and support could occur in classrooms. These are brief examples that are not necessarily happening at all classes across WJCC, but could be happening in several of them. For the pairing of relationship skills and collaboration, many teachers spent time during the first few weeks of school to collaboratively set academic and behavioral expectations with their students. During these discussions, students had opportunities to share their goals for the school year and the classroom environment that would help them reach those goals. Teachers could then adopt the ideas deemed to be supportive of the overall classroom. All parties are able to learn more about each other's priorities and preferences for the year, and students are more likely to follow through with behavioral expectations that they have set in collaboration with their peers and teachers. This common understanding will assist students as they engage in later cooperative learning activities like jigsaw readings, science labs, and other group activities. For the pairing of social awareness and citizenship, teachers could provide sample statements for students to use if they are working collaboratively and have a disagreement. The statements might help students to clarify and understand each other's perspectives and to share their own thoughts and ideas while working towards a common goal. Students could utilize these sentence starters as they prepare for a debate in their government class or determine the name of a new class pet. For the pairing of self-awareness and creative thinking, students can complete skill and interest inventories to assist them in setting goals, identifying their strengths, and planning for college and career pathways. Teachers can utilize students' interests and complementary skill sets when forming groups for a collaborative research project about a community issue. School counselors also work with students to identify and develop goals for their future. For the pairing of self-management and communication, students could practice giving and receiving productive feedback to their peers and teachers. While it can be difficult, responding productively to feedback is an essential skill for students to be successful in school and beyond. Language arts and English teachers frequently utilize teacher and peer feedback to support students in the writing process as they refine their work. Finally, for the pairing of decision-making and critical thinking, students can consider potential options they could pursue after graduating from high school. For each, they can identify the steps they will need to take and goals they will need to achieve in order to complete their plan. Students completing the research project on a community issue that was mentioned earlier will utilize these decision-making and critical thinking skills when predicting the impact of potential responses and recommending the best solutions. These examples demonstrate that SEL instruction is not something new. It is a support for the high quality academic strategies and practices that are already taking place across WJCC schools. A key part of any learning is the connection between the student's home and school. While each school may have different names for their communication, examples of how schools are sharing information with families includes weekly newsletters, teacher email updates, remind, social media, and also family newsletter from the division. Additionally, this family academy and family academies throughout the year aim to support families in student learning and development. We hear from parents and families requesting resources and strategies so they can support their students with school at home. Related to SEL, a lot of these things may be already happening. For ideas to support you in those conversations at home, this could look like supporting students as they learn to navigate time management, goal setting, and peer interactions. Another topic that often comes up, especially for secondary students, is appropriate use of social media. The conversations you have with your child about what is happening on social media and how you can support your child in making good decisions related to social media 
are so important as they learn to navigate that environment. We've also provided resources for you that we can place in the chat if you'd like to read more about strategies for supporting SEL at home. If you would like to learn more about SEL in the state or generally, the Virginia Department of Education has a specific page to SEL as well as CASEL's website provides thorough information related to SEL. For questions that are more specific to your child, we recommend you reach out to your child's school counselor for assistance. And Dr. Hyland will be putting links to all of these items um, in the chat for you to access as well. In closing, we'd like to highlight that SEL is life skills that help individuals establish and maintain supportive relationships and make responsible and caring decisions. And at this time, um, if Dr. Hyland could, could assist, we'd like to answer some questions uh, that may have come in that you all might have. Absolutely, thank you for all that wonderful information. Um, we have a couple of questions and I do believe you've addressed some of these. They came in pretty early and just in case they weren't addressed, but one is, um, is SEL integrated into the curriculum or a separate lesson? So that's a great question. Um, it can be both. Uh, so SEL can, it could be a standalone lesson, perhaps given during a morning meeting or through the school counselor. But also, as Nick pointed out in some of, some of his instructional examples, um, SEL is part of good instruction that's already happening uh, in our classrooms. So it, it could be a little bit of both. Thank you. Um, and then how is WJCC using SEL specifically to support students in culturally relevant ways? We're looking at each other on who's gonna answer, go ahead. Uh, so that's also a really great question, uh, and that's one of the um, big focus areas for us. And so in the, the resources and the materials that have been provided to faculty and staff, uh, we've provided information about how to ensure that these strategies are being implemented in culturally, culturally relevant ways. Um, one of the biggest pieces that we have supported with um, teachers is just helping to, to create those uh, safe and inclusive environments in their classrooms that allow students to um, you know, be themselves and share their own personal experiences um, and to value those personal experiences in the classroom as, as part of the overall classroom culture that they're building. Uh, and so as they're able to, again, uh, create those situations when students are able to share about you know, who they are and who their family is and, and again, their own personal cultures, um, they are able to, sh you know, show and, and share um, their experience and share that with each other in, in hopefully very productive ways. Thank you. Another question is, how, oops, sorry, um, what, what are some of the SEL strategies being used in a division to meet, to meet the unique needs of some of our military families? And I feel like SEL, you know, I'm going to, 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 to preference it with this. I feel like SEL is, is there to meet the needs of all of our students. But if there's anything in particular that you think speaks to these unique populations, that would be great. And you're right. SEL does support all of our students, but we do recognize that some students have, have unique needs. Mm -hmm. um, it might be a little bit separate from SEL, but when we move over to school counseling supports, um, which do encompass some of SEL, but SEL happens everywhere, not just uh, with school counselors. Uh, we do offer support to our military students and it can look different, depend on the grade level and the needs of the students. Um, there are, we do have some programs in some of our elementary schools as well um, that are specifically related to supporting our military students. Perfect. Um... One last question I see here, are um, you seeing any gaps in um, SEL due to the pandemic? I can jump in on that one. And yeah. then if, uh, 
if I leave anything out, Jessica can 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 jump in and help me out. Um, I don't know if gaps is necessarily the correct term. Uh, definitely with students um, either spending a lot of last year in virtual environment or in the hybrid setting that we might have uh, or that they experienced um, and with less experience around other students. Uh, we are definitely seeing that some students need kind of a reintroduction um, to um, kind of the regular schedule of being in schools. Um, and, you know, one of those specific examples that I spoke about earlier around, you know, dealing with, you know, productive feedback or uh, being in situations where they may have a disagreement and supporting students um, and being able to address those disagreements, again, in productive ways that don't lead to, you know, any additional conflict. Um, there is certainly some of that just as a result of, um, you know, students just not having been around each other uh, for, you know, long portions of time over the last, what, 18 months. Um, but I don't, I, beyond that, um, I wouldn't necessarily say that there are gaps. Um, but, you know, I think all the, the skills and the lessons that we talked about hopefully would be beneficial to all of our students, um, you know, whether they were virtual academy last year or virtual academy this year or in person for parts or all of the year. Um, so hopefully that aids a little bit. Jessica, is there anything I left out? Sorry, my computer is throwing me some technical glitches this evening. So thank you for your patience with me. Um, no, I think you covered it. Thank you, Nick. Mm -hmm. And yeah, from what I heard tonight, it sounds like um, SEL is designed to build resilience in, in students anyway. So that would be, that would, that makes sense. Um, also, um, how can families support SEL? Like what can they do at home to support what we're doing in school? So I love that question um, because I believe firmly in the connections between home and school. Um, one, I did want to highlight if there's a, a pretty, I'd say lengthy um, tips and document from Castle that we've shared um, in the chat that you're welcome to look through um, just for new strategies. If you're always looking for new ways to connect um, at home, what's happening at school. Um, but a lot of it can really just start with talking about not just what you did or how the day went, but what you did and what you learned and what activities were like and what it was like working with um, a new group of kids, because that can be uncertain for a lot of students and how they can maneuver those um, conversations and relationship building. Um, so a lot of it just starts with those kinds of conversations. Nick, do you wanna add anything to that? I think that's a, a great start to the conversation. Um, and I think that um, when Dr. Hyland put the link to this particular resource that it didn't actually come out as a link to us, Oh, I'm sorry. Which resource is that? The castle one? Somehow I got muted there for a second. Uh, yeah, but I just put the link in um, that uh, Jessica was referencing on Thank the you. supports for uh, parents and families. And there's a few, there's uh, a couple of pages specifically in there with some quick, I think it's like 10 strategies specifically for parents um, to use at home. Um, and, you know, we hope that the SEL supports and instruction that are happening in classrooms are, you know, supporting uh, what you all are doing at home with your um, students. Thank you. Um, I apologize about the um, link. Um, so thank you for adding that. At this point, I don't have any additional questions um, in the chat. So I am going to say thank you for your partnership and for sharing this information with families. It is very valuable. We will post um, this video to our division YouTube channel so that more families can join. So I, I um, would ask that the families who did who were in attendance to share that with their friends so that they can understand more about this topic. Um, and then I do, I'm sorry, there's one last question that came to the chat. It just, how do we find out more about SEL and our students' individual curriculum? Um, I think that, thank you, I'm sorry. Our individual curriculum, I think these resources should provide them some support for additional resources for that. 
that were in yes. the chat. The, the resources in the chat can help you um, learn more about that. If you're looking at what might be happening in your child's school, um, for example, Unity Week was last week, um, you can always reach out to your school or making sure that um, you receive the newsletters from your school or um, the, they all have different names to them. So I don't wanna start quoting them all and be wrong on what they're called. Um, but oftentimes you can find out about what's going on around the building um, through that as well. I would also just recommend um, going and looking at the VDOE SEL standards uh, by the specific grade band of your student or students. Um, the example that I shared was for just one specific objective within self-management and how that was broken down across the different grade bands. Um, and so that would be another very helpful place to, you know, uh, based on your student's grade level, take a look at those standards and it'll give you a better idea of the kinds of skills um, that we're hoping that they're able to develop um, through the instruction. Perfect. I, sorry, oh, go I on. just wanna highlight that, um, I know we referenced a lot of things throughout our, our time with you tonight um, and resources and data, all of that is available within the links that we've provided. So the research is available on CASEL's website and we provided a link to that. The standards are available on the VDOE website um, in addition to their entire VDOE SEL page. Um, so hopefully we've provided you with um, anything that you'd like to dive deeper into as well. This is perfect. And we've had a lot of thank yous in the chat. So I'm not the only one who has found this information very valuable. So I want to thank our host, I mean, our panelists for joining us and presenting this information. Again, we will post the presentation and a PDF of the presentation on our YouTube channel um, and division website. If you have questions, you can always reach out to us directly, and we are so pleased that you joined us today. Thank you, and good night. Thank you all. Thank you. Very helpful.